Here we are in the week of the full moon in Sagittarius, and it's time to take a tremendous pressure and turn it into diamonds. Before I get into what this full moon in Sagittarius means, I'd like to talk about a massive energy shift that we're experiencing right now. In the first half of the month, the month of June, we were experiencing a lot of Gemini energy. So it was very social, a lot feeling a little bit like a, a social butterfly, a lot of activities, a lot of improvisation, a lot of mental activities. Kind of feels like, uh, you know, the neighborhood potluck, everybody coming together, bringing their own dishes, celebrating, you know, it's kind of fun, exciting. Okay, that's, that's Gemini energy in a nutshell. But now we're making a massive shift. On the 14th, the planet of Mars is in an opposition to Saturn. And this is much, much different. Uh, Saturn likes to slow things down. Okay, uh, it likes discipline, it likes hard work, it likes practical, realistic thinking. And Mars, the god of war, is a bit of a speedy Gonzales. You know, Mars does not like things slow. It likes things fast, it can be a bit impulsive. It's action oriented. It's like andale, andale, arriba. You know, hurry up, let's go. Let's, let's be assertive, let's charge into battle without much forethought. You know, that's Mars in a nutshell. So here we have this opposition, you know, Mars and Saturn dead opposite each other in the sky. This creates a tremendous tension or pressure and it can feel a little bit like accelerating with the brakes on. So Mars doesn't really like to be in opposition to Saturn because their energies are so different. Well, Mars is also in the sign of Cancer. And of all the signs of the zodiac, I think Cancer is probably one of, you know, at the top of Mars's list as the least favorite to be transiting through. Because Cancer is an emotional sign. All, all water signs are emotional. And Cancer is actually the most sensitive emotionally of all the signs. So this can lead to extreme emotion, reactivity, reflexive behavior, impulsivity. Okay, so not only is Saturn or Mars in a, in a opposition to Saturn, which it doesn't care too much for, but it's also in a sign it's not too excited about either. And this can be a very dynamic energy, as we'll soon see, but also quite challenging. So with Saturn slowing things down, this can create a dynamic where projects or things can just take slower than they would in an ideal world. And it can take more exertion or more effort to get those things done, which can, you know, be exhausting. It's important to manage your time well during this uh, Mars-Saturn opposition and be very realistic with yourself about what you can and cannot accomplish and prioritize your projects accordingly. Mars opposite Saturn is hard-nosed. It's hard-edged. So nose to the grindstone is a cliche that comes to mind. You know, things pressing at us now, responsibilities that really need to get done. One thing I really love about this pattern is it sometimes forces people to take action in their life, things they've been avoiding out of uncertainty or fear. They become so uh, obvious to us and so pressing during this time that it forces us to go into action. And that's actually a really good thing. So Mars and Cancer, you know, more extreme emotions, more reactivity in the face of needing to be productive and work on our projects, usually it's good to just armor up and push our emotions to the side and, and get through what we need to get done, you know, our responsibilities. But with our emotions more compelling, you know, more extreme, more reactive, it becomes more difficult to do so. So we just need to be aware of that and make sure they don't impede our progress. We can get confused while navigating extreme emotions while also trying to get things done. Furthermore, with our emotional states more pronounced with Mars and Cancer, this can create a tremendous uh, anxiety when looking at a mountain of tasks. Also create frustration because again, there's this feeling of accelerating with the brakes on. Now in working with this energy dynamic, one helpful strategy is to create a pretty rigorous schedule for yourself, a structure. Saturn loves structure. Of course, within that structure, scheduling in some restorative time and maybe some exercise so you don't become totally exhausted. 
because Mars opposite Saturn can create a level of exhaustion from overdoing it. Saturn represents the ability to just do things that we really don't feel like doing, and that's really being tested now. So by creating a thorough schedule for ourselves and barreling through our inner resistances, we can achieve a sense of accomplishment, dignity, and self-respect by making headway towards making uh, a great work, you know, accomplishing a great work. That's really the highest expression of Saturn. And that creates, you know, a sense of, of, of accomplishment. Not everybody will be feeling this pressure cooker of energy in the same way. It's helpful to know where the Mars and the Saturn lands in your birth chart, you know, what house of the chart it's in right now. And also, if in your birth chart you have a lot of planets in the signs of, you know, Cancer, Capricorn, Aries, Libra, okay, all these energies are going to be affected by this opposition right now. So, if you, if you want more insight about your own chart, if you're unaware of it, you know, I do offer birth chart readings on my website and you can find the link in the show description below. This is all leading up to the full moon in Sagittarius on the 17th. Now, what I just described with the Mars Saturn feels like a contraction, you know, a repression, a restriction. Well, full moon in Sagittarius is a complete expansion. Late last year, when I was looking down the barrel of 2019 astrologically and figuring out all the big events for this year, uh, the biggies was the Saturn-Pluto conjunction, you know, Saturn and Pluto dancing in the sky together all year. And then also the Neptune-Jupiter uh, square that happens for most of the year until about October. Now, with, I'm not going to get into detail about what all that means, but in a nutshell, you know, Saturn, Pluto is about contraction. That's how the energy feels like a contraction or a restriction. And then the Jupiter Neptune is a great expansion. Okay. So that's the macrocosm of the year. Here we find ourselves in June and a little bit of a microcosm of the macrocosm because Mars opposite Saturn is, again, accelerating with the brakes on. It feels a little bit like a contraction holding us back. Leading into this full moon, on the 17th in Sagittarius, which is a great expansion. You know, Sagittarius is the gypsy, the scholar, the philosopher. There's a zest for life with Sag, uh, a quest for knowledge and learning, you know, saying yes to life. So this really feels like a breath of fresh air compared to, you know, that hard-nosed, hard-edged Mars opposite Saturn. Full moons are a time of culmination, you know, completion things coming into the light, being revealed. So truth may come into the light and be revealed. Truth is a Sagittarian concept. You know, things come into full bloom. You know, there the moon is, you know, fully reflecting the light of the sun. This is a powerful full moon because it, the moon's also in the neighborhood of Jupiter. You know, it's about five or six degrees away, but it's a moon-Jupiter conjunction. And Jupiter's in its own sign, Sagittarius, so it's a really strong Jupiter. It's also lined up directly with the center of the galaxy. So when you look up at the full moon, right behind it will be the center of the Milky Way. So this suggests a tremendous creative potential, creative energy for this full moon, and a maximum expansion, and an expansion of consciousness. Because Neptune is also involved in this story because Neptune is slowing down in the sky from our perspective here on Earth. It looks as though right now that it's at a complete standstill. It's called stationing and a planet always stations before it goes direct or goes into retrograde. So although the, the day of the exact station for Neptune is on the 21st, the summer solstice, it's effectively stationing during this full moon because it takes, you know, for about a week there, it's barely moving in the sky before it finally, you know, goes retrograde. So whenever a planet is stationing, it's at maximum power. So we're getting this, this huge Neptunian pulse running through this Sagittarian full moon in the center of the Milky Way. During this maximum Neptune time, during the summer solstice and full moon, it's a perfect time to set the intention for the next season of an evolution in consciousness. Okay, set the bar higher 
in regards to your meditative practice, your seeking spiritual truths. Summer solstice, also a great time to celebrate, to get together with loved ones in, during this transitional place between you know season to season. This is a sacred day, so it's great to get together in celebration and leverage the superpower of collective consciousness and group intention to create a better future for yourselves. Just a couple weekends ago, at a UFO conference, a big group of about 500 people got together and did what they call a CE5. I don't know exactly what that means, but the, their objective is to get together as a group, meditate together, and set the intention to make contact with UFOs. And I saw some footage from uh, that event, and the UFOs they saw in the sky was quite amazing. The reason I say that is not to recommend that during the summer solstice you do a CE5 event. I'm sure that would be alien to you for more than one reason. Uh, but it fits the image of getting together in a group, in a form of celebration, changing your level of consciousness together to a, you know, a light trance state, and to set an intention, a positive intention for you and the group. In the case of the CE5, their intention was to make contact, which they did. But here, during the summer solstice, it's like, what future do you want to bring to yourself coming into the summer here? Because there's no time better for intention setting and for manifestation than this Neptune station on the, uh, on the summer solstice. I use the phrase pressure into diamonds for this video, and I think it has a double meaning. The first meaning would be the pressure of the Mars-Saturn opposition, you know, and creating a diamond. What's the diamond? Well, this, the Saturn great work, you know, accomplishing tough tasks, even when you don't feel like it. You know, that's the diamond in the rough. The second meaning I like is, you know, the Mars-Saturn opposition, that pressure cooker energy for the 14th, 15th, and into the 16th a little bit, leading up to this this, uh, this full moon and the summer solstice, which is that breath of fresh air, the contraction, then the expansion. So the pressure of that opposition leading into the creation of a diamond, which is tapping into this more Neptunian meditative place to create magic. You know, the magic of a future you want to bring into reality for you and, and for your loved ones. So I laid out really the highest expression of this combination of planets over the next week, um, where there's the most potential for growth. I didn't really lay out the shadow side or where, where we may be led astray. It basically comes down to, you know, it's it's implicit in what I've already said, but let's make it explicit, with a heightened level of emotional reactivity, charged emotions. You know, when we start to feel that, when we get triggered, those those feelings can be quite compelling. Sometimes we can even feel possessed by them if they're strong enough. You know, the, the blood seems to rush out of our head. We can't really think clearly. And we're overtaken by these really strong emotions. Okay, so if you allow yourself to go too deeply into that and get distracted from the tasks at hand, it can lead to interpersonal drama, basically. And that drama would just distract us from what we really need to do, which is, you know, nose to the grindstone. Now, working with, you know, the, the strong Neptune, Sagittarian energy during the full moon and summer solstice, the less optimal way of working with that energy is, you know, partying too hardy. I mean, there's nothing bad with having a, a good time. But really, it, it distracts us from the highest potential of these energies, which is to raise our frequency. By focusing our strong emotions into staying on task and productive, we create a sense of dignity and self-respect for getting things done, even in the face of inner resistances. And then we can fully shift gears and surrender into a celebratory, you know, dance around the bonfire. That's a very Sagittarian image. And leverage the superpower that is the collective positive intention. Mm -hmm.